emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Shut up and sit down. Hello again, gang. Colin here, Best of 67's workshop. And what have we got for you today? I think we need to do a bit of assembly. So we need to work on this just to bring it up to that level. Okay, so we'll put some guns in, do a bit of gunnage, and then we can get that ready then for some paint. So we'll grab a bit of the old glue and make a start. I'll just grab me nippers. Now some of these little bits will need a bit of dressing up once they go in but bear in mind this is only the base coat folks that's all this is at the moment let's just grab the instructions that would help Cole wouldn't it yeah just so that we can start seeing what we're doing on this side I think I've done the driver's side yeah so I've got a t-shape and a holy one uh, yeah forever gonna be known as a t-shape and a holy one just grab a sander give that a bit of a dose of the old sandage and I've got to put some worn effects chipping fluid over all of this so that's what we're gonna do with that so not too fast how it looks don't even worry about that yet purely and simply because we've got a gun to go in there in that bit there I know hey big boom sticks and shooty sticks and everything hey cool I'd love to have a go in this oh mate I think of the fun fest I could have in this hey folks what possibly could go wrong hey me Tony and Fox got one each just think of the fun we could have on the battlefield eh? Yeah, I think there'd be generals running, trying to resign their commissions, mate. If us lot got hold of one of these. Okay, let's get the big kaboom stick off of this one. And another one there. And it's that awkward dilemma at this stage again as I think I might have mentioned this before when you get to this stage of a model kit you always start thinking oh I'm nearly at the end you know but just get that off of there and again I can touch these little bits up so when I painted these I kind of undernard as to whether to keep them on the sprues or not but for me it was at the time a bit easier to do it that way so that's what I did uh, a bit of gunnage to go in there uh, okay so that goes in like that with the sight poking up just like that that way there you go give that a slight adjustment yeah well, I really I must admit I thoroughly recommend getting these kits if you if you're thinking of it and I know a few of you are because you've been in touch with me and there are a few of our our community that come into the 
the Monday e-model show and, and things like that that have expressed an interest in getting this kit and I can't recommend it enough I must admit I have really enjoyed it it's been a pleasure to do this little build to be honest with you I'll just get the old spudger try not to knock the camera cut and just give that edge a bit of a persuasionary tuggage like so and then come around that side because I haven't heard it pop yet but it's in there like so, make sure the gun's up the right way, Cole, didn't you? Yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was my veiled attempt at machine gun fire. Please don't be like Fester. Make your sound effects a bit better than that. Like that. Yeah. And then we can just have him slightly at rest I think because the Dio on this is the Russian guys that are in this tank are parked on the top of a nil in their sort of relaxed mode should we say so I think a bit of vodka has been flowing and uh, yeah they might be a bit uh, a bit drunk um, and they're just sitting there waiting and thinking right what can we do with ourselves I'm just going to pop that out just for a sec what can we do with ourselves because we've got a bit of downtime and yeah that's what they're thinking so they're not quite sure what to do with themselves let's just give that a bit of a scrape because that's actually not as round as it looks piece that's it you will comply because as we all know resistance is futile like that. and we'll give that a bit of a a touch up when the old uh, what's his name goes on chip in fluid coal closing the name yeah and we'll just make sure that that's going the right way yeah we have the sight just off that way round like that and it should pop straight in now there there you go Like that. Give it a bit of that. Like that. Now that, I think, was quite a resounding pop. And I actually thought these were going to be a bit more movable than they've turned out to be, but with paint and everything that goes on there, I suppose, we are being optimistic in the hope that these would move freely. I suppose the guns would have had a bit of droopage had we have gone down that road too far, but still would have been nice to have a bit of bit of movability in them, but oh well. Needs must and all of that. So we'll put a bit of glue on there. I might have to make another pot of glue. There you go. Right there. Okay, so I think I'll have that one pointing to the skies but that's what we wanted like that there you go bit of gunnage 
So, yeah. Some of that. Right. I want to keep that pipe in place, but that gives us a bit of character, different angles, and yeah, I like that. So we've got that. We've also got this to go in as well. So I think we can slot that one in because that one's for neatoed. And we can dig out the old wet palette and start painting the other ones. All his ammo in place. The gun's gone a bit drunk in it, Carl. There you go. That's what we want. Right there. Yeah. So we've got the other ones to paint brass yet. So we'll do that. But we've now got sort of a bit of character going on. So I kind of want things in different angles and this is the driver's viewer in case you're wondering the gun is at the back on that side so that they've got 360 degree cover so one up there one going over the way one at that angle and one at that angle and i think they've got all their edges covered uh just have a move of the driver's viewer because that's a bit bronzed in it there you go there you go yeah, I want him to be able to see reasonably where he's going, but then driver might be outside having a smoke, don't forget, so yeah. So that's them done. We're happy with that. Uh, my pipe's just pinged off my radiator, so we'll put that safely to one side. And we'll come back at that. So they're done now. Like so, and we'll grab that little piece off of there. I think that's the muzzle break off of that gun there. Might need a bit of super glue on that. We'll see. Just to be on the safe side there because that doesn't look too great. There you go. PU, it's on there, Carl. think to be on the safe side we'll lean that over there Whew. okay we don't need none of those so we'll put that to one side don't need the glue now That can go and live out the way, and it's going to be paint time. So when we come back, we'll do a bit of painting. There you go. Like that. Have you a bit of that? And that's what we want there. All the way. Like that. There you go. 
so we're going to have that. So they're done. So we can put the wet palette away for now. Or have we? We've got a couple of bits to touch up, haven't we? Uh, yeah, we have. So we'll just touch up the bits on the gun. Just to be on the safe side. A little bit of the, the green in there. Because if I remember rightly, our gun had the sanding stick suitably applied, didn't it? So we want to just quickly scoot along any edges. Again, not worried because it's getting painted over, but also, you know, maintenance on tanks, you know, they would have just got the pot of paint out and given it a larrapin, so. We're going to have a few different textures and a few different areas that may have had um, a bit of maintenance done. So that's my excuse. I'm sticking with it. Like that. There you go. It's a bit round there as well. All right. We did it. Now we do all the noises as well in here, you know. A little bit on the inside. There you go. What have we got there? We've got another bit there. Yeah. See, so old Igor's been round with his paintbrush, see, and he, he's been in one of his fix this moments, and he's gone round the tank and given it a bit of love because the tank was feeling a bit sorry for itself. It had the ump. It was feeling a bit unloved. So he, he, he's gone and painted it. So. Yeah. So we'll be back in a minute to start uh, the next stage, which will be the... And what am I going to be using? Well, I'm going to be chipping using some AK Warn FX chipping fluid. And this will be um, going through my airbrush. And this is the AK-088 Warn FX. And just put a little bit in your airbrush spray two or three mist coats let it dry and that's what i'm using for that that'll then go over with some model color white over the uh, top of the chipping fluid and then i'll chip that back to expose some of the green underneath and then when i come to do the um track that's then going to be stippled with a sponge with some washable white paint just to give it a bit of texture and then the skis I'll have some aluminium model air and these are all paints that were kindly supplied by my sponsor e-models there and then there's going to be some wooden deck going on the skis as well so it's an aluminium frame with then wooden slats on it so that's going to be going on and then for the diorama we've got some track stuff which is going to be a bit of Russian earth around the tracks bit of detritus and things like that as well as snow texture that's going to go on the grass but also some of this is going on the track as well just to try and give it a bit of 3d definition or a thick snow sticking to the dirt so there's going to be a bit of all of that going on and all so i'm looking forward to starting the diorama to be honest with you because i think it's going to come out pretty good so that's the paints i'm gonna spray the ak warn effects and the white paint in the spray booth you've already seen that uh, in the previous episode that set up so if i do that off camera we can then focus on the stuff on camera which is going to be the weathering okay folks so when i come back it's going to have a bit of white on there and then we can start getting on with the chipping 
<laughs> right, I think we are ready to start agitating some of the edges of this with a bit of water. So we just lightly apply in a few places and see what happens. and it's just just starting to lift it on the edges folks see like that that's what we want right. Random wearings there. Now I'm not going to go too mad. To be honest. Just see what happens. With it. Just have at it. Oh, I'll get a bit more round body hinges there. So we'll start giving this a little bit of a watering around the edge there, like so. And get this little door done, a little dab in the middle there and a bit just to the edge. Uh, probably give this a little soak and as well gonna, whilst I'm doing the door. This going to start around here. Getting a bit aggressive at the bottom there because round this strut is going to be where most of the wear is like and so same with the gun. Because where the gun's yeah, shooting yeah, at the yeah. enemy, the enemy is going to be shooting back at the gun. So you're going to have a lot of dingage, bullet holes, ricochets and all of that lot around the edge of the tank there. So we'll come up underneath there and around the reinforcement where the shock absorber goes. And start coming at the edges of this now with a brush. And this is quite a stiff little brush this one it's one that came as part of an airbrush kit and i tend to use it for me chipping because 
you can bang at it like uh, using a drumstick you can bang at the surface and it'll leave little dimples and chips in the paint as it flicks the paint off and I find it's quite an interesting texture that it leaves behind so I tend to use this one for pretty much most of the chipping that I do which isn't a great deal if I'm honest because it's not a technique I've fully mastered I mean you know you want to see quality chipping you go and have a, a looky look at Ted's stuff and he does some really nice chipping and um, yeah I'm kind of trying to lean towards that style but I've got okay. a bit of bit of practice to do yet but hey we'll get there so we'll have a bit of that and then we'll start coming now at the leading edges of the body of the tank or the shell half whatever you want to call it plenty of scrapes around the bottom here because it's going to have navigated itself between rocks and boulders and lumps and bumps and bits of hard ground and yeah you got it because the driver you know he's only looking through that narrow little gap so he ain't gonna see everything on the surface is he and he's just gonna cane it along there and I judging by the look of this I don't know whether these skis stay down or whether they retract but I can imagine when it gets up a bit of momentum it, it's uh, yeah it's gonna leave a bit of damage behind isn't it and uh, dare I say it I think Sergey wouldn't, wouldn't really worry too much he'd be sort of well I'd done what I needed to do to defeat the enemy and that's that's the mindset so we'll just come round here round these little viewing pulp there and he's really really bright light that he's got to see in the dark with <laughs> went all out with that didn't they so we'll have a bit of texture going on around now just start stippling towards the door because stuff would have bounced off the track been that it's rubber and bounded along the curved surface and sort of the heavier damage would be in the middle and lighter damage would be towards the edges I would have thought so yeah so we'll come at that with a brush We'll have a little bit of uh, damage around the door frame there where the door's been slammed more than once and they've been getting in and out wearing their backpacks or guns or lobbing stuff in and out of the tank so there's going to be damage where stuff's been put in through the hatch like rounds of ammo and things like that gun boxes and yeah so we'll just come at the top of that give that a C in two because you know no doubt as it's been going along stuff's been thrown at it from above if it's coming out underneath a bridge or a tunnel and someone's heard it coming they've had a few rocks or whatever and they've been standing up there and you know he's on his way quick quick drop something on it to try and stop it so it would have had all kinds of things done to it the poor thing but I must admit, having having built this, it looks quite a resilient little thing, even though it's only a what-if subject. You can just imagine something like this, actually, in the real world, and it's one of them that gets you thinking, doesn't it? And uh, I've got another one of these in me stash, and I kind of am thinking of perhaps bringing it into the modern world as, as, as I mean, I've got an idea I just don't know whether to run with it yet or not so I'll have a little think about it but yeah I've just got this this little idea doing the rounds in my mind and yeah so we'll just flick this now from the out from the center sorry to the outside even and uh, start doing a bit of damages around there but it does give it quite an interesting finish because I've got some long grass to paint on this as well as part of the camo scheme with the box art um, there's long grass painted up the side of the tank there to try to blend it into nature 
so I've got all of that to do yet so I'm kind of thinking how best to approach that so that's going to be coming up in an episode I'll probably do it with a wet palette and a very fine detail brush if I'm honest wet the paint right down thin it down as far as I can and uh, go with that and see what it looks like so we'll just feather this around the door opening now bit of water and then we can start the same process there across the grill because the radiator's the other side so there'll be some heat wear around that where the paint's warmed up and bubbled and got hot and We'll have, we'll have a bit of dirt and detritus around there as well from where, where the radiator's been uh, venting some of the smoke from inside the vehicle so yeah and then we'll start working our way towards the centre part now of the shell where it joins the tray around the top of the gun Ignore the hum in the, in the background, uh, someone forgot to turn off his compressor for his airbrush. So I do apologise, I'll turn that off in a sec. But, uh, I'm in weathering mode, so I'll lean over and grab that in a minute. In case you wonder what it is. Uh, we can come around the gun support there, around the reinforcing ring, the mounting ring, whatever you want to call it. Give that a bit of wear and tear along the sides of the barrel there, I think, as well. Because he's been going down the road, it might have struck the side of a tree or anything like that, hit something. So we'll have a bit of that going on and on. And then come at that with a brush. A little bit around there. Try and get some of these bolt heads exposed as well. And then just start doing some different line angles of approach and things like that as well because things are going to hit at different angles. It's going to hit them at different angles and trajectories or whatever. So, got all of that as well. It's turning into quite an interesting little build, this. And I've got ideas in my head on how I want the diode to go with it. and hopefully when it's finished and that you you get to see the vision that i had at the beginning i just saw it sitting on a almost like a little grassy knoll uh, with a few rocks and things like that it's sort of come out of tree cover and it's just sitting there and there's a little slope and a, a bit of a river going on or something like that so i want to try and do something but not go too mad with it if you know what i mean because i don't want to massive diorama because poor old e-models have got to try and display this in quite limited space because Ted's filling all their space up with these big ships and subs that he builds so I'm being mindful of poor old Pete with his, his, his work in space <laughs> um, what I'm going to do with this track is most of this grey is going to come off so the grey itself is almost going to be like a highlight um, this this uh, centre part is going to have wear where it's hitting the shells, the rubbing of the track. But most of this grey is going to come off, and it's just going to be where the ridges are. It's going to sit in the recesses because I've got the Russian earth. I've got bits of white paint to stipple on there, and snow and, and things like that. So it's going to be a right old mishmash of textures. So this is just its initial two coats or two contrasting colours to try to give light and shadow uh, the tank obviously had a rubber track so it's going to be almost like a large tractor tyre type affair but I just want to have a bit of detritus in there and a different bit of contrast and stuff showing through basically so yeah put a bit around there where it's been rubbing against the shell as the, the track's compressed it's rubbed around the metal so it just gives like a black almost like a, a tide mark around the edge where it's just been buffing against the side of the shell there so that'll give that a bit of a definition should we say 
and then we'll come at the track from all different angles and ways and just scrape all the grey back as far as I want to go and you'll know when you've got there because you'll start thinking oh, I don't want to go too far, too far, too far because it's all going to come off and that's when you stop when you start thinking oh just a little more well just have a rest a cup of tea and a smoke if you smoke and, and then come back at it if you need to because that sometimes that 10 minutes away from it you come back and you go actually I think I'll leave it there and, and stick with it as it is so bear that in mind folks less sometimes can be more so I'm just going to grab the edges of this now and really be quite brutal with it and get it how I want it and then we'll park it then until it's all dried off and then I'll gloss over everything I've chipped ready then because I've got a couple of decals to put on and then I'll gloss over them and then I'll paint the grass on and then it's going to be snow dirt, snow dirt detritus, bits of rock, bits of gravel, bits of this, bits of that so we can start putting it in its scene so I'll probably do the decals and then start building the dio and get the tank sat on it and then do the whole lot weather 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 and uh, see how we look try and integrate it and blend it all together I think so let's quickly capture this edge like so and put the tide mark on this side as well and I think then we'll call that little bit done I'll let it dry and then go over it with a quick quick bit of gloss just to seal everything in before we do the next stage folks and we're doing a bit of decaling today so I just want to see how many of the decals are actually on the outside of this tank and I think it's only two of these guys so I think because we've started chipping at the old doors there I think we might need to do our bad boys a favour and start looking at mounting the doors so we need to figure out which way round everything's going so that we get the bits and bobs in the right place so I think we can safely say that that is that side so we've got a door going that way on that side so I just want to make sure that the doors sit right and that we look okay with what we're choosing to be the relevant door for each side so I think that door looks like it belongs there like that so we'll have a bit of that there's the first one so let's get the scissors and start trimming out the decals so we want the snowman basically with the boxing gloves that's what we're after and we'll get him in place and then we can uh, start looking at doing the final chipping and, and weathering on the tank so one of those out of there get rid of that half and we want to lose the star always keep your old decal sets as well folks any off cut decals that you don't use on this kit you could end up wanting to use on another one so I always keep them but I also 
bear in mind that I could scan them and, and do bits and pieces and play with the designs as well so they're all scanned they're all saved and uh, yeah that's that's how I roll basically so let's bring in me solutions and drop them there and we're going to put that decal on this side so I'll just quickly give that a little dip in some water because I can on that side and I'll do the other one as well whilst I think of it like that and grab the other tank half and start thinking about the final bits and bobs with the decal so I'll just put me uh, clips down to one side <coughs> excuse me cough in there that's the driver's side on that one so shall we have a little looky look now I did give this door a bit of a gloss coat because I wanted that decal in a certain place Just start fanning it out. Here's what we want. There you go. And that is just simply done. Like that. Not going to faff. Not going to worry about it because going to be a few scratches put in it at some point as well and then the same on this one bear in mind as well underneath is chipped but the decal itself is going to have a little bit of wear and tear on it in its next carnation state so I'll just run that over like so bring that over and then just start smoothing out like so I'm going to let them go off and see how they take probably come back at them with a bit of chipping fluid might just give them a little scratch a ding here and there but that is the decals pretty much on so let's just drop a little bit of strong solution on there just to bring out some of the contours and let the decal itself really shrink into place on this and some of the paint might try to lift off some of the decal might try to wrinkle up because it might reactivate some of the chipping fluid underneath it might not I mean I've glossed between the two but if it does it does it perfect for me because it just lets me chip some of the decal as well so it's a win-win isn't it so that's that done um, I think then possibly we could start looking at uh, putting the tyre maybe in place to start thinking about doing a bit of weathering on it so I think we'll pop that wheel back in 
and see how we're looking I think just gave it a little ease and squeeze just to get the first one in there you go and then it goes under like that and we start to get the wheels in place like that there you go nice resounding pop as she goes in that is the tyre back on the ball tank look at that folks it did not make a difference seeing that on there I must admit yeah now I can uh, come at her and start figuring out how to put bits and bobs in place because I've got to put the radiator side in and get that in place uh, a little bit more weathering on the engine now that I've got the tyre to grip onto so I can come back at that with a bit of Starship filth um, yeah so I think once that's started to look pretty rosy isn't it is that the radiator side yeah so that side's going to go on like that so as you can see already she's beginning to take shape so I'm going to pause at that for today leave the ball tank to cure and uh, yeah we can we can leave that episode and bid you farewell until the next one when we can put the sides on and start weathering this little bad boy up uh, paint the skis with some aluminium and wood deck and start thinking about the uh, diorama as to where the tank's going to live so until then don't forget to pop over to e-models grab yourself one of these ball tanks uh, if you want to build along with me they are open for business now and everything's returning to normal so pop over have a look at the sh uh, store have a browse slap it in your basket and i look forward to seeing you next time along till then bye bye for now